Oh. All right. Um, the whole purpose of this video is to show how to fix one of the flaws of the ZMT-10 or Turnkey Stadium King, however you look at it. And I've cut a lot of this out because the first time I tried to do a video with this, I kind of left everything attached and screwed and it was an obnoxiously long video. So I've shortcut it. Um, for the most part, there's no suspension attached to the transmission now. It has been completely removed from the vehicle. And that means that you got to, rem to remove it, you have to loosen all four screws for the shock tower, remove the two back ones that are located here, and then you need to remove the two suspension screws down here on the bottom that con connect the control arms to the transmission, and then the six screws that are on the bottom of the chassis that hold the transmission to the chassis. Not really that hard. Then there are uh, five or six. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws, sorry, more, a whole lot more than I thought. Eight screws that hold the transmission halves together. And you'll want to remove all of them to get to the point that I am at now. You also want to remove the slipper clutch, which is just one nut, a spring, uh, two discs, and two pins, and then the spur gear. But that's the uh, long version of that. Um, Okay, back to the main thing. The transmission, when it's new, has bushings in it, and I recommend replacing them as soon as possible. You want to remove them and replace them with bearings. Um, this is actually pretty easy. Um, you only need four bearings to actually replace the uh, bushings in the transmission. And of course, they're the highest priority on the vehicle. Uh, the ones, the bearings located at the wheel ends are important, but these are a higher priority in my opinion. Um, one goes in here and then another one goes actually on the other side of this drive gear here and then two of them are actually installed in the drive gear located here. Uh, there are already two bushings installed in the, or bearings installed in the transmission and they are supporting the differential which is the large gear unit right here. Now the most important part of this is all about shimming. Um, I've seen a couple people say that their transmissions didn't have any uh, lubricant in them. Um, mine did have a lubricant. It wasn't a grease like a lot of people um, expect. It was actually kind of a thin silicone fluid and then the differential had grease in it. But uh, the most important thing is shimming the differential. That is going to be the number one trouble area I see if anybody upgrades past the stock motor. Now there are four screws located on the differential assembly and you'll need to remove all four of them. and make sure to use the proper size Phillips screw because you do not want to round out the cross on your screws. I don't really know offhand what size these screws are but they're awful small so I'm going to lean towards probably two millimeter. They don't look big enough to be two and a half in my opinion. They look like more like a two millimeter or a, maybe a one and a half. I haven't seen one of them in a long time. They do exist. And you want to make sure when you reassemble this not to over tighten these screws. Um, you want them just tight enough that they're good and snug and that they're not going to come loose. Because there is a gasket on the inside that makes it unnecessary to crank them down. You can actually tear up the gasket by over tightening it and it's really just a waste of time. All right, so I've got both halves here, and the two spots to look at for play, and the spots that you're going to need to shim, oops, are the out drive and the inner drive gears. Now, the out drive is actually fairly easy to do. Um, I recommend using the 
five millimeter by um, shoot, and I can't think of how thick they are, but um, the five millimeter Traxxas fiber washers. You can use metal. I've used metal here on uh, one side of it because I actually needed to install two shims. But uh, try to put the fiber washer towards the inside. Um, it actually will absorb a little bit of lubricant since it's kind of a fibery, uh, cardboardy kind of material, and it'll keep it from wearing out your case. This side isn't as important since it's metal, but the other side is plastic, so try to use them. There'll be a parts recommended list down below uh, that you can go off of. But um, try installing one shim here at first, put it back together. There's a little o-ring that goes down in there that you don't want to lose that seals the case. And then put your side gear back in. This is kind of rushed, I'm sorry. But uh, due to some, my battery is about to die, I think. But uh, make sure that the e-clip can go on fairly easy. You don't want enough, pre uh, too many shims. If you have too many shims, you'll have to apply a lot of pressure to the side. Uh, output and to the drive gear to get everything to line up and you'll be over putting too much pressure on the o-ring um, so really you just want mild pressure to take out the slop um, like I said I had to use two o-rings on or two shims on mine but if you have to fight it too much you, you've got too much preload once it's done there shouldn't be uh, very much wiggle room at all and yeah, that's about still about right and there should be a minimum amount of friction um, you shouldn't get a whole lot of friction out of that the other area that needs shimmed which you need to do the out drives first both of them are the pinion gears or spider gears whichever you want to refer to them as but they are located in the center and you should be able to see them there and they ride on this center shaft now from the factory mine did not have any shims located here on the ends hopefully you'll be able to see those and mine really needed them um, this showed up as play in between the two side drives I could hold the center and rotate them back and forth and I could actually get an audible click out of it uh, if I tried hard enough and all I did was install one shim on each side. You want to make sure they're the exact same thickness. I believe these were three, three millimeter. Okay. And you want to put a little bit of light lube on it, but don't really lube it up. Reassemble the unit with two screws. Okay. And then test to see how. I can't do this without the screws in it, but see how easily it rotates. Um, when you've got it about right, you should get just a hair bit of grittiness. I don't know how else to really describe it due to the design of the gears. There should be just a fine little bit of uh, grittiness to it. And uh, you should have it about perfect. If you go any tighter, then it'll be feel like a locked, it'll feel like it's locked up and extremely tight too loose you'll be able to wiggle uh, these two drives back and forth without any consequence um, theoretically if you put this down and actually work it back and forth there shouldn't be any play between the out drives but uh, that's pretty much it and there'll be a list down there below so pretty much five millimeter shims and then three millimeter shims on the differential and just keep adjusting it till or adding and taking away shims till you get it right um, too loose is better than too tight but and too tight will give you issues that you will obviously notice um, too loose as long as you're not having a bunch of audible clicking you should be good all right the other part that uh, kind of leaves a little bit to be desired is the clearances inside the transmission case there's a lot of side to side clearance um, the gears can move left to right really easy on the shafts and that 
causes some issues um, especially with the gears and the bearings rubbing on the case sides so I recommend installing shims in here also the easiest way to do that is to uh, pretty much empty the transmission out of all the drive gears but the top gear shaft first okay uh, install your bearings and if you're doing the top gear put a screw in each of these three holes tighten it down snug not uber tight because you shouldn't over tighten them really bad or really tight anyhow but just tighten them up to where they're reasonably tight and then come over here to the other side and move your try to see if you can move this back and forth a small tick worth of play is all right um, mine was actually exceptionally sloppy and I could move it in and out by a very large margin it was more than just a tick and I could actually rock the shaft back and forth a very large margin adding the shims took out clearance it took out the clearances so that this couldn't rock back and forth and it also couldn't insert or move in and out as easy um, and I personally added the shims on this one on the inside Oops. on the inside here between this drive pin that uh, now drives the gear here hopefully you'll be able to see it the drive pin and the inner bearing as it seemed to line up the idler gear best there we go it seemed to line it up the best and it also kind of gave the uh, a bearing something to seat against instead of against that pin um, it was one of the other reasons the center idler is a little bit more difficult just because the uh, you can't really grab a hold of it or move it if you remove the top shaft so about the only thing you can do is install a shim in my case I had it's actually stuck there to the side with just a hair bit of grease reassemble the case and this time you want to pop in a couple more screws you want to do here 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 and preferably one over here just to help give a little bit more support to that shaft and you're gonna have to go off a of feel um, just kind of gently rotate it using the outer shaft here hopefully you'll be able to see that just gently rotate it and uh, if you put too many shims in you'll notice it due to the drag it'll put too much pressure on the bearings and trust me you'll feel it if that when you hit that point take a shim out or go to a thinner shim and you should be good to go but it does take a decent bit of the disassembly and work and it does take a few parts to actually do this correctly but I'm pretty confident that most people should be able to pull this off relatively easy while I'm here one of the other mods that I did on this was I installed o-rings on the out drives of the differential and the reason for this was because the oops holes actually located here are rather large compared to the out drive and it'll allow dirt to get to the bearings if you can find an o-ring that is the right diameter where it'll slip over the out drive but not rub on the case you can install them as a shield to help protect the bearings and uh, for now, I think that's all I have about the transmission. If you wish, you can put a silicone differential fluid in the differential to help with the, with the action. Uh, help give you a thicker, tighter, posy style rear end. But uh, that's up to you. But I think I got everything pretty much covered. Hopefully this turns out alright.